Welcome to SciTech Culture with Steve Kern and Ben Warner, where we examine science, technology, and culture in the 21st century. Visit our website at scitechculture.com. All right, so it uh, looks like we're back indoors today due to some inclement weather. Um, I, I did enjoy um, the time outside uh, last week because, um, you know, it was a, an interesting little experiment, but um, I was actually really heartened by uh, how that actually turned out. So, you know, if you want to check out our last episode, I was in the great outdoor, well, yeah, relatively great outdoors anyway compared to where we normally are. But um, I, I was just really happy with how um, all of that turned out, um, like, I'm actually replicating the um, the setup from last week with no microphone, so you can't see it in the in the image today. So, um, in theory, if it worked <laughs> outside, inside should be fine. So, it's just it's just really encouraging that with uh, all this, it, it's now become a very minimal setup. Yeah, well, you're coming through uh, loud and clear and uh, looking good in your virtual arrangement you've got there. So. It's, uh, it goes to show you once again how much the technology has advanced. Yeah. You know, I, I'm just recording this podcast alone in the last 10 years. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. So um, I'll uh, plan on uh, doing um, uh, some more episodes outside, but again, it's all uh, pending weather. And I'm, I mean, we're in we're into autumn now um, over here, and uh, obviously the weather's going to be a little bit more inclement, uh, inclement, I guess, uh, over time. But um, we'll squeeze in some more at some point. But you get some of those lovely autumn shots from uh, Melbourne. Oh, which, may, uh, may, maybe like a, the the falling leaves in the background or something. <laughs> it can't be up. replicated anywhere else in the world. Yeah, that's right. That's right. No Hollywood studio production required. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk about um, simulation theory today and um, – see where this rabbit hole takes us down because um, it's entertaining and the reason why I say it's entertaining is because I saw a clip of um, Neil deGrasse Tyson I guess talking about a portion of it as we were saying before we got on I actually uh, was more entertained by his delivery in that episode as opposed to the actual yeah. content because he has, he, if we just talk about him for a minute I, I really do um, uh, think that almost, I mean, obviously what he gets across now, he explains things is good, but I think it's really that in that delivery that he makes it, he gets so enthused and enthusiastic and excited about whatever it is that he's explaining that you get into it naturally. And I guess that's a good hallmark of a good science communicator. Oh, that's right. That That is why he is one of the great science communicators, just his enthusiasm. Mm. You know, uh, having, having said that though, I mean, uh, he took a very tricky topic today and I think and uh, you know really made it accessible it's, it's it's something that everyone likes to think about it's something that everyone I guess likes to contemplate especially when they're having a bad day <laughs> and uh, you know it's also one of those very deep philosophical sort of uh, lines of inquiry Mm. Well, okay, we'll start with what um, uh, I guess what the starting point with what he was talking about was the probability of, um, you know, si of simulate of us living in a simulation being real. And I guess he sort of landed on it being 50 50. Um, and uh, without going too much into the rabbit hole, you can ch check that <laughs> clip out on its own. But um, the idea being that, um, you know, the real world created a simulated world, which then became advanced enough to create its own simulated world within that simulated world. And then it just went, kept going and going and going. So we're, I think what he was uh, trying to get at was that we're either in the real world or um, we're in a simulated world that hasn't figured out how to do the simulation yet, um, which means it's either a 50-50 chance that we're in one or the other. I think I distilled that down as he explained it over the course of seven minutes that it, yeah, uh, yeah. it was just kind of spinning out of control because there could have been millions of these simulated levels, I guess. Um, for well, lack of well I think term. you're braver than me attempting to uh, explain whatever <laughs> he tried to explain, but I, I, I'll just add this. I thought it was interesting because, you know, he only, I guess, contemplated it in kind of a digital simulation. Yeah. And what made me wonder is there could be other alternate simulations that we are yet to be able to perceive or conceive. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't know what that does to his percentage of probability if there are uh, different ways to simulate or some of these simulated universes have different laws of physics 
Exactly. So. Yeah. Um, and that, that, I guess that like, I, I'm, you know, unpacking that can of worms is what is actually a simulation. <laughs> now you, we, we could probably spend hours like uh, going around in circles on that one, because uh, as you said, like he, he was focusing on it more being a, um, a computer program, like the matrix, I right. guess, for lack of a better term, but it could be the figment of somebody's imagination. It could be yours. It could be mine. Um, it could be operating in an entirely other realm. Are all these parallel, you know, parallel universes or multiple dimensions or whatever that exist are they simulations? Um, and it, again, it depends on your concept of what it is. But um, and, and your framing. Hmm. So you know, as he put in, like the essence of. So how, how are you looking at this? Is it you know mid simulation or mid on the way to simulation or are we pre simulation? Or are we the simulation? I guess um, one thing that sort of occurred to me was um, uh, it's sort of dancing around the idea that somebody created the simulation um, because um, it, I mean, I guess there's another aspect to this that did it spontaneously create itself or something. But <clears throat> I think at the core of this for me is like the, this idea that somebody created it. And I'm just wondering if that's just a riff on, you know, it's not religious, but it's kind of like another attempt at explaining that somebody created what we all can see and hear and all that sort of thing and i'm just wondering i don't know like looking at it from that point of view i think it feels it feels like it devalues it a little bit because it's a you know it kind of makes it sound like um you know um there, there aren't any other possibilities apart from that well that that's right but i think this is where humans unfortunately have just got no answers for for things that you can't explain in the first place so hey by jan i abiogenesis which is you know the the spontaneous uh, development of of life or you know in the universe is just as highly unlikely as the universe itself mm. uh you know people try to explain how that might have happened whether there was a creator or whether it just could come from nothing and you know really to a human i don't think that either of those is a reasonable solution. You can choose to believe either and, uh, you know, work hard at convincing yourself. But uh, I guess I probably sit on the fence where, you know, I don't think certainly with today's knowledge we can never know and you're probably only going to go insane trying to work it out. Well, that was well. I mean, just going back to that clip of uh, what Neil deGrasse Tyson was going through, he sounded like he was going down a huge <laughs> rabbit hole, and it was. I was impressed that he was able to tie it up in about seven minutes of um, explanation. Um, but it's interesting that um, uh, this has become a concept, I guess, that pervades you know, not, I guess, pervades the culture in a way because it's been around for a while. Um, I can. I saw that um, you know Elon's been talking about it. Um, recently but i can imagine that he would be uh he'd be probably into it um given i don't know his thought thought processes and whatnot that he's uh, that he's got um and i guess it makes it interesting for people to think about as a, as an alternative or something like that yeah well that's that's right i mean Questioning our existence is a very part, I think, of the human condition. You know, we want to know why we're here or how we're here, whether it's tracing our ancestral lines or contemplating the, uh, uh, I guess, the existence of the universe. And, and simulation is, is just something that fits in there because it's part of our imagination and it's part of our ability as sentient beings to be able to concern ourselves with such matters. But, you know, I, I think he hits on it in, in that clip and, you know, we ourselves have spoken about it in, in terms of we do so many different simulations in our everyday life, whether it is just mentally simulating and anticipating what might happen next in a situation or through visualisation or, or, I guess, uh, contemplation itself, um, whether it's, you know, creatively um I guess, uh, communicating a piece, whether it's through writing or film. These, these are all aspects of simulation. The computer game simulation, which I guess was the main sort of point of reference for, for the clip, is is just one of these types of simulations. And in, in a multiverse where there could be very different environments 
that look the same but behave differently, a bit like we have Newtonian physics and, and then once you get down to a certain scale, tiny scale, you get quantum mechanics, which is completely different, maybe maybe that could be the same rule for simulations, mm. in which case the simulation we wouldn't expect to be anything that we might even know or even indeed recognise, especially if there's an extra few dimensions thrown into the environment. That, 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 it's just occurring to me then, does it, <clears throat> it almost in a way from a certain point of view doesn't matter because are we talking semantics then? Um, if uh, Is it just a word that people have thrown out? Because I guess if you really broaden out that it could be any sort of definition of what a simulation is, um, <clears throat> then I don't know if that word actually has any meaning in this particular context. Uh, like what's it adding um, to our understanding um, other than um, because, you know, all these things could exist in various different formats. But I guess um, uh, I guess when most people think of simulation theory, they're probably thinking of a computer simulation. Um, and that's something that, um, uh, you know, like you were saying, that it doesn't have to be locked into that. It, um, it could be um, any type of form or, or anything like that. But if you broaden it out beyond a computer definition, it really, I, I don't know if um, it actually has any meaning, that word, anymore. I, ex exactly, and I think this comes down to uh, that a simulation might be something that we're yet to conceive or perceive. So, you know, I imagine, uh, you know, probably if you were back in uh, ancient times, even though everyone would have thought you were crazy, you could explain, you know, the idea of talking into a stone and somebody else a long way away, you know, picking up a stone and, and, and talking yeah. to you. But back then there would be no way you could possibly conceive or perceive or probably even communicate a silicon chip. Mm. So, um, and I guess that's what I'm sort of getting at with the simulations, you know. Of course, start with a digital idea of a, we're in a program and somebody's created it and it behaves in a certain way. But their, their position might not have the parameters of ours, they could be completely different beings that have simulated us. Yeah. And as he points out, it might be they don't have enough technology in their in their computing yet to be able to simulate a world on their level. Yeah. Well, I mean, I. I I did enjoy all those bits where he was saying, um, oh, the, simula the Sims have uh, figured out a way to do space travel. Oh, let's program that in <laughs> kind of thing. I love that bit too. I thought, you know, that's exactly, I guess, what I'm saying. So, you know, maybe at some point we'll become so enlightened, as he was pointing out, that we're on the way to producing simulations ourselves once they find out how to give us that fun or that feature <laughs> in our simulated world. It, it's mind-blowing once you get to it, but it, maybe it means that we will be able to travel faster than the speed of light and at some stage get wherever we want to go to in the universe in a flash. Uh, and again, I like the bit where he said, oh, they set the rule of the speed of light so that it would put an artificial limit on us being able to, <laughs> to find all this stuff out. Uh, it, was a, it was an entertaining clip, so I encourage it's everyone to have a look at it. Um, and just um, as a random side thing, um, if you want, like a, there was an obscure film in the 90s, I think, called The 13th Floor, which was um, about a simulated world that created a simulation and then the simulated world figured out they were a simulation. Um, I'm not can't can't remember if it was actually that great a film, but at least if you want to get a, the idea of the concept of a computer simulated world, I guess that might be a good one to check out. Um, but anyway, um, uh, I guess uh, just like sort of wrapping it up, um, it it. it I just want it kind of feels like a philosophical discussion that kind of can just go on forever and have no real resolution in a way, um, because um, depending on how you define it. No, that, I agree. I, I don't think there is a resolution and I think uh, anyone who, who, whether they're incredibly knowledgeable or not so knowledgeable about this, this sort of uh, philosophy would agree with that. But what it does do is it opens the mind and it allows us to explore whole new areas of thought and thinking and it, it gives us, well, I'd like to think, it gives us hope that anything is possible yeah. if we can perceive and conceive how we might do something. Mm. So that's uh, 
that's truly exciting. And that's why I think it's important that everyone has some fun thinking about these sorts of things. And I guess the final thought is if you don't want to do your brain in perhaps don't think about simulation <laughs> theory. <laughs> they said just play the game. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, so um, we'll wrap it up there. Um, don't forget our website, SciTechCulture.com. All of our links and content are there. Um, you can catch us on YouTube, Vimeo, and our RSS feeds and watch us on any and all of your devices. And we appreciate your visits to our website. All right, so that's it for this episode. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>